Frontline Updates, where we delve deep into military strategies and updates from conflict zones. Today, we're discussing the progress of the ongoing special military operation as of July 31st, 2024. I'm your host, Sharifa Mohammed, MGT. I'm Colonel A.C. Ogentoy, an infantry officer. Losses and gains. The Russian forces have inflicted significant losses on Ukrainian troops, including up to 710 soldiers in one area, as well as damaging or destroying multiple pieces of military hardware such as tanks, artillery, and armored vehicles. Additionally, several ammunition depots were reported destroyed. Welcome to today's episode of Frontline Updates podcast. With us today is Colonel A.C. Ogontoya, an infantry officer leading soldiers in multiple levels of command. Today, he's here to discuss the recent developments in the ongoing military operation. Colonel, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Let's dive right in. Can you update us on the overall progress of the special military operation as of today, July 31st, 2024? Yes, certainly. The Russian Federation continues its special military operation across several fronts. Our forces have been actively engaged with Ukrainian units, focusing on maintaining and advancing our positions while inflicting significant losses on enemy manpower and hardware. Can you specify the regions where major engagements have occurred? Yes, key engagements have occurred in the Kharkov region, particularly near Tykoi, Storitsa, Lipsy, and Volchensk. Additionally, heavy conflicts have been reported in Donetsk's Krasny Lyman, Nevskoy, and Makievka, among other areas. What about the losses inflicted on Ukrainian forces in these areas? In the northern sector alone, the Ukrainian forces suffered losses including up to 350 troops, various armored vehicles, and artillery pieces. In the southern regions, their losses were even more substantial, with up to 710 troops, a Leopard tank, and several artillery systems, including M777 howitzers. With such intense conflicts, how are the Russian forces managing to repel Ukrainian counterattacks? Our troops have successfully repelled several Ukrainian assaults due to superior tactical positioning and the effective use of combined arms operations. In each of the mentioned regions, at least one counterattack has been repelled in the last 24 hours. Turning to air defense and artillery, could you discuss their role in this operation? Absolutely. Our air defense units have been highly effective, shooting down two HIMARS projectiles and one Neptune missile recently. Meanwhile, our artillery and missile troops have engaged Ukrainian forces in 143 areas, significantly disrupting their operations. And what about the role of technology in this conflict? How significant are unmanned aerial vehicles and electronic warfare? They are crucial. Our use of unmanned aerial vehicles has allowed for precise strikes and better battlefield surveillance. Electronic warfare units have also been pivotal, particularly in jamming enemy communications and disabling their electronic devices. To conclude, Colonel, what's the strategic outlook for the upcoming days? We are focused on consolidating our gains, improving our tactical positions, and continuing to degrade the enemy's ability to respond an important figure in the new report. The total losses of Ukrainian troops per day amounted to 2,130 people. Once again, 2,000 people per day, minus the crew in 24 hours. And this is without an offensive, only on defense. The operations are ongoing, and our objective remains clear, to ensure the security and operational success as mandated by our strategic goals. Colonel, thank you for providing such a detailed briefing on the current military situation. Your insights are invaluable to our understanding of the conflict's dynamics. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Join us next time as we continue to provide up-to-date coverage on global military affairs. Stay with us for more updates and expert analyses on global defense and security issues. Stay informed, stay secure. Thank you. The killing of Ismail Haniyeh, Hamas political chief, in Tehran during a raid described as treacherous would likely cause significant diplomatic fallout and potentially on a broader international scale. This incident would severely escalate tensions. 
Iran's strong response, including vows to make Israel regret the action and to avenge Hania's killing, signals a potential for retaliatory actions which could escalate military tensions in the region. The incident could destabilize the Middle East further. Iran vow to retaliate could involve other regional players and possibly lead to an escalation of hostilities between Israel and states in the region. The killing taking place at an event only for diplomats in Iran could lead to a broader diplomatic crisis, with Iran possibly demanding international condemnation and action against Israel. The involvement of a diplomatic venue could also raise questions about violations of international law and diplomatic norms.